So I'm going to talk a little bit about some trigonometry here. Technically, you should have had a class in trigonometry before you took this class. Um, you can get by without it, but if you struggle with it, you should see me or uh, a math tutor. So we'll be using trigonometry throughout the course of the semester. Um, and uh, I'm just going to kind of assume some basic knowledge of it. And so I was just going to write down a few things. First of all, this is a right triangle. We indicate a uh, right angle with that. That's a 90 degree angle, right? And so we pick an angle here that we're interested in. We'll call this one theta. If this is a right angle, this is a hypotenuse. The side that's opposite the two legs of the angle is called the opposite side. And the side that's the other leg that com comprises the angle, but not the hypotenuse, is called the adjacent side. So H is hypotenuse. Try that again. Um, o is opposite. A is adjacent. And so we have three trig functions. The, the sine function, which we just abbreviate sine, S-I-N, of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I want to know the sine of the angle, I just divide that side by the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle, theta, is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is, uh, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. And so you can rearrange these and say, look, the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. The adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. And, and, um, uh, and we can say, you know, the adjacent side, uh, sorry, the opposite side is equal to the adjacent side times tan theta, if we want, for example. Um, so, um, if I have uh, if I have uh, a thirty degree angle here, um, um, if this side is two and this side is one, this side is the square root of three. Or to put it differently, if I know these three sides, right? I can figure out th what that angle is. And by the way, I don't know if you remember the Pythagorean theorem. Is, uh, if I have some a, a right triangle here, and this is just a, b, and c, then c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And so for, th for this triangle, we can check that, right? 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared is equal to 2 squared, right? And that's a 1 plus 3 equals 4. And that checks out. And so, um, so I can say, uh, for my triangle here, which I just drew, 1, 2, square root of 3, right? Um, if this is theta, then sine theta is equal to 1 over 2, or cosine theta is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, or tan theta is 1 over the square root of 3. So if we know any of these sides, or, or any two of these sides, we can figure out what the angle is. The way you uh, invert this equation, you can say, well, if look, if sine theta is equal to 1 half, 
then if I want to solve for theta, I have to take the inverse sine of both sides. The inverse function of a function is just uh, the argument to the function. So sine inverse of sine of theta is just theta. Sine inverse is just a function on your calculator. And so you should be able to find that on your calculator and take the sine inverse of 0.5 and you'll notice that that's 30 degrees. Um, similarly, if cosine theta is equal to uh, square root of 3 over 2, which is about uh, 0 0.866 or something like that, it means theta is equal to the cosine inverse of 0 0.866. Again, you should try to do that on your calculator, and once again, you'll get 30 degrees because the cosine inverse of this thing is the same thing as the sine inverse of that thing because they're the same angle, and um, and you'll get and you'll get your theta that looks like that. So um, sometimes we write uh, there's a mnemonic. Sine is opposite, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, Sokotoa. And so if you remember this, you can generally remember how to use, uh, how to use these, uh, how to calculate the sine and the cosine. And so let me give you a different one. I'll say, look, um, if this is 60 degrees, and this is 10 meters, what are these two sides? Right? And so we know that sine of theta, we'll call this theta equals, uh, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or opposite is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. Opposite is equal to 10 meters times the sine of 60 degrees, which is 8.66 meters. Lost my head there for a second. That's the opposite side. That's the opposite side. That shouldn't say zero equals. I probably should have used a different letter, but I want to indicate it as the opposite side. So the opposite side is, uh, is uh, 8.66 meters. Similarly, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine of 60 degrees. And that's uh, 10 meters times uh, 0 0.5, or the adjacent side is 5 meters. That's a little bit on using sines and cosines. Um, we do that a lot when we're working with vectors. Some basic trig there. So let me talk a little bit about vectors. Certain physical quantities are vectors, which means we're going to talk a little bit about vectors. Certain physical quantities are vectors, which means they have both a magnitude and direction.
certain physical quantities. Remember, physical quantities are measurable properties of matter. We talked about them at the beginning of the chapter one, or in chapter one. Um, things like mass and temperature and velocity, acceleration and so on. Um, it turns out certain physical quantities have uh, a direction associated with them. All physical quantities have a magnitude. So mass has a magnitude, temperature has a magnitude, um, charge, uh, energy. Not all things have a direction. Not all physical quantities have direction, but some do. Mass doesn't have a direction. A mass couldn't be moving in a direction, but that's its velocity. A magnitude can be displaced in a direction, but that's its displacement. Right. And so physical quantities that have directions are called vectors, and math with them is a little different. And so um, some physical quantities, I'll put PQs up here, which are vectors. And so this would be displacement. velocity, force, acceleration, momentum. Again, they have a magnitude, which is their value and direction. So for a velocity, the magnitude would be 30 meters per second. The direction would be east. For a force, it would be 15 pounds downward, if I'm pushing down, 15 pounds downward. So the magnitude would be 15 pounds, the direction would be downward. So the magnitude is kind of like the value. Um, physical quantities you're mostly used to are called scalars, and those are just numbers. So that would be like mass, temperature, um, energy, uh, charge, and so on. There's a, this is a, both of them have a longer list. So these obey the math that we're used to, algebra and stuff like that. These we have to be a little more careful in how we apply it. Um, and so I'm going to give you some examples as we go because we have both a value and a direction. Remember we did an example with the displacement east and the displacement west so that the total displacement was zero. Displacement's a vector and so the direction matters. Distance was a scalar and so if you went a mile east and a mile west, the total distance you traveled was two miles, but your displacement was zero because the direction makes a difference. So we're going to do some math with vectors because we're going to be adding physical quantities that are vectors and subtracting and multiplying and so on. And so um, consider two displacements A and B. A and B are vectors because the displacement is a vector, and so I indicate that with a little arrow over the top. So you can say Bob has these two displacements. Here's, here's displacement A right, two miles east, right, here's displacement B, now I've purposely stuck the tail of B at the tip of A because I want to add them and that's how you add vectors and I'll talk about that in a little bit more, but you know if I say Bob walks two miles east, right, and then he walks one mile north, and I can ask, well, what is Bob's total displacement? I want to say C is equal to A plus B. And the way you add two vectors, A and B, is you take the tail of B and you put it at the tip of A, just like we did here. And then to add the, to make the sum of the two vectors is you start at the beginning of A, because that's the beginning of your journey, you might say, and you draw a vector th to the tip of B.
And so notice math with vectors doesn't really isn't really the same thing as math with scalars. If I said, you know, a is 2 and b is 1, what is a plus b? You would get 3, right? 2 plus 1 is 3. But because these directions matter, I went 2 miles this way and 1 mile that way, clearly this is not 3, right? If I want to know the, 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 the magnitude of c, I can write it with like an absolute value sign. I can say, um, we'll just, we, we just call it a, a, a c without the vector on top. I can say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, because I know that north is perpendicular to east. And so this is a 1 and that's a 2. That's equal to 2 miles squared plus 1 mile squared. And so c squared is equal to 5 square miles, right? Um, 2 squared is 4 miles squared plus 1 squared is 1, so 1 plus 4 is 5 miles squared. I take the square root. That's equal to the square root of 5 miles, which is about 2.24 miles. Right. Um, furthermore, um, I, I, I have to now specify a direction for C, right? I have to get this angle to give a direction. Again, if I want to consider, if I want to determine the total displacement C equals a plus b, then I have to um, not just give a direction for, uh, not just give a magnitude for C, but I have to give a direction as well, right? And so I get. Um, here I get theta is about 26 degrees. And so the vector C is uh, um, 2.24 uh, miles, 26 degrees north of east. You follow that. So this was 2 miles east plus 1 mile north gives me a vector that's 2.24 miles, that's its magnitude, 26 degrees north of east. So when we're adding vectors, if, this is a, if these, these two could have been velocities or forces or something like that, a plane is traveling 20 miles an hour, this meters per second this way, and a, and a wind that's traveling 10 meters per second that way, and those would add like vectors, and the net effect of the plane's velocity would be along that line. Um, in this case, since I multiply it by 10, it'd be 22.4 miles per hour, meters per second, 26 degrees north of east. So if I want to add vectors graphically, I can just have one vector here. Here is A. And this one going this way is B. Right? And so if I want to say C is equal to A plus B, here's what I do. So if I want to say if I want to find the sum of these two vectors, c equals a plus b, I just come down here and I draw a as best I can, and then I draw b as best I can. Again, with the tail of b, let me let me tilt b a little bit more because I think it was a little more like this. Right? I've tried to take b and just move it to the tip of a. And so here's a and here's b. And I place the tail of b at the tip of a, and so I've done that. And then C is the vector from the tail of A to the tip of B. And so that is C is equal to A plus B. Notice that C's magnitude, that is to say the, the length of this thing, if these were distances, is not going to be the same thing as the sum of this one plus that one. 
right? It's going to be smaller than that. And so vectors obey a slightly different math than scalars do. If I have a one kilogram mass and I add a two kilogram mass, that I get a three kilogram mass when I add them together. But it's not true with displacements. You remember earlier I said a guy went a mile east and then a mile west. The total displacement was zero, right? Direction matters with vectors. And so we would have to, if we were going to solve this algebraically, which we will, we'll have to have a way of accommodating the fact that the vectors don't point in the same direction and we're going to have to take into account these angles and stuff like that. So that's how you add vectors. Um, it turns out, you know, if you wanted to say, um, if you wanted to add multiple vectors, so suppose I had, um, this is A, and this is B, and this is C, and I want to say D is equal to uh, A plus B plus C, I would, I would draw A, and then I would draw B, and then I would draw C. So this is A, B, C. Right, I've tried to draw each of these, so I've tried to put this one here, put this one here, put this one here, and then D, I would start at the tail of A and go to the tip of B. so on. So now we're going to talk a little about subtracting vectors. Um, I'm going to try to use the same vectors I used a minute ago. All right, there's B. And so suppose I wanted to say C equals A minus B. All right, well if you remember um, back when we talked about numbers, not in this class, but years ago. Subtracting is the same thing as adding the negative. Right? If I wanted to say um, um, uh, x is equal to 4 minus 2, I could say it's equal to 4 plus negative 2. And this gives us a better picture of what subtracting vectors is about, because negative b with the same magnitude. So if that's B, then that's minus B. And so now if I want um, if I if I want to say C equals A plus negative B, right, that's that's uh, this plus that, right? This is A minus B. And so this is C equals A plus negative B, or A minus B. And so th that's how you subtract vectors. If I wanted to say, suppose I want to say vector D is equal to B minus A, I could do that too, because now I would draw my B first, my B points this way. Right, I just draw my B here, and I want to put minus A, right, if this is A, then this is minus A, right, and so I would draw minus A with its tail at the tip of B, and then I would start at the beginning of the first vector, which is, in this case, it's the B vector, and that would be D. And notice D just looks just like a minus B, B minus A looks just like A minus B except pointing in the opposite direction. And that makes sense because minus D is, is minus B minus A, which is minus B plus A, which is just A minus B.
it's the vector C. I mean, you should be able to see that it doesn't matter what, what order you add vectors in. So, right, again, if this is my A, and this is my B, then um, A plus B looks like this. It looks like there's my A and there's my B. And my C points up that way, right? Um, if I instead wanted to add them the other way, B, and they do an A this way. Oh, that's not very good. One more time. It comes out looking the same. In fact, if I draw a parallelogram, with A's on this side and B's like that. If this is B and this is B and this is A and this is A, right? The diagonal of that parallelogram is C and this is B plus A and this is A plus B and it produces the same vector. So we've talked a little bit about adding and subtracting vectors graphically, and we're going to work our way towards talking about them, uh, doing these things algebraically or mathematically. And I'm going to begin by just giving you a few properties of vectors, um, namely their x and y components. And so if I draw a coordinate system here where this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis, and just pick a vector and draw it, right, and I call this vector A, then I can, I can find the x and y components of A by starting at the tip of A and drawing a perpendicular line to either axis. I usually pick the x-axis, but I don't have to. Um, that's a perpendicular line to an axis. And then if I draw, go from the origin to the point where that line meets the axis, this is called the x component of A, usually abbreviated A sub x. This piece, the vertical part here, is called the y component, A sub y. If you think of these two guys as vectors, then we can see that AX plus AY is equal to A, right? And this means, so I can say, look, A is equal to AX plus AY. And what that means is that the, adding these two vectors gives you that vector. And so these vectors in their sum is the same as that, in the same way that eight is equal to three plus five. Wherever you have eight, you're free to stick in three plus five. They're the same thing. Wherever you have this vector A, you're free to replace it with its X and Y components. This is an important point later on when we start adding vectors mathematically. And so if, you know, if, we, if we pick an angle, this is say 30 degrees, and we say A is equal to 10 meters, its magnitude is 10 meters, right? And we can say, look, um, A sub X is equal to A times cosine of 30 degrees. And that comes out to 10 meters times 0 0.866, because that's the cosine of 30, which is 8.66 meters. Similarly, a sub y is equal to a times sine of 30 degrees is uh, 10 meters times 0 0.5, which is 5 meters. And so that's how you find the components. If, if this was in a different quadrant, so let me just draw this again. For example, I could have this, I could have y and x, and maybe my, uh, my vector here. I'm going to give it a different name. I'm going to call it b, right? Um, and maybe this is, uh, I don't know, uh, 
um, 45 degrees. Now let's pick a different number because that gives me the same answer for x and y. Let's pick 60 degrees. These are the ones whose sines and cosines I kind of know by heart. Um, and so um, since I know this angle, I want to make a triangle out of it. And so rather than go to the x-axis here, I might go to the perpendicular line over to the y-axis. And so there's one of the components and there's the other. The vertical component is the x component, is the y component, and so that's my by, and this is my bx. If I wanted to give them vector labels, I could. Um, and so now my x component is, uh, is the opposite side in this triangle, and so I would say bx is equal to b times the sine of 60 degrees, which is, uh, uh, if I want to say B is say, I don't know, 5 meters or something like that, then this is 5 meters times 0 0.866. It's just what the cosine is for a, for a 30 degree angle. That's uh, four point three three. of course it is. Um, here's my x-axis. That's equal to 4.33 meters. Similarly, b sub y is equal to b times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 5 meters times 0 0.5, which is 2.5 meters. Um, notice I, I, I'm always just treating this thing as a triangle. I'm not worried about the, the total angle from, say, the x-axis over to the vector. If, if I was going to write this as a vector, I'd have to indicate that it's pointing in the negative direction. And so here I might say bx is equal to minus 4.33 since, since it points in the minus x direction. When we're adding vectors, direction matters. And so if I was going to actually be adding this to another vector, I'd have to make sure that I know that this vector is pointing this way. I do that by giving it a negative sign. And a positive vector would be pointing that way. Because when I add them, if they're pointing in opposite directions, they have to cancel out. right? If somebody walks 4.33 meters this way and then 4.33 meters that way, the net effect has to be 0. So we'll talk about this more as we go.